and a good morning to you. So Mondays are one of those days which can either be seen as the day that everything can go wrong. I mean, it is an, even has a, a name as Blue Mondays. Or we can see it that it is the day which one can start afresh. So I choose to see it as a fresh start today, as we continue with our series called Happiness. One of the places we can search for happiness is in the art of celebrating oneself. That is quite the difficult one, especially if one is always competing against another in life. And not just in the workplace, but we are conditioned to perceive others as being the lucky ones if they have something we do not. We turn to scripture for words of wisdom and we turn to Jeremiah 32 verses 19 which says, you have all wisdom and do great and might, um, mighty miracles. You see the conduct of all people and you give them what they deserve. This brings me to an old story which I found in the devotion from Bethany Church about an unhappy and dissatisfied stone cutter. It's a folk tale, so let's listen to it. The stone uh, cutter met a merchant one day and was fascinated by all the beautiful goods that the merchant was selling. I wish I was a merchant, said the stonecutter, and miraculously his wish was granted. Not long after that he saw a parade pass his little shop. When he saw the prince dressed in all the splendor he had never seen, he said, I wish I was a prince, and he became a prince. But a few days later when he was outside, he felt uncomfortable in the hot summer air above his head. Even a prince cannot be comfortable in the sun, he said, I wish that I was the sun. This request, of course, was granted. This stone cutter was happy to be the sun until a cloud blocked him from the earth one day. The cloud got in my way, he said. I wish that I was a cloud. Once again, his wish was granted. And he was happy until he met a mountain so high that he could not climb. This mountain is bigger than me, he said. I wish that I was a mountain. As a high and mighty mountain, he saw all human activity from above and felt that he was finally happy. But once a stone cutter climbed upon him and cut rock and there was nothing he could do. That little man is more powerful than I am, said the mountain. I wish that I was a stone cutter. So the circle is fulfilled and now the stone cutter realizes that he can always be happy just being himself. He will never dress like a prince, shine like the sun, or grow tall like a mountain, but he is happy to be himself. So often we are like the stone cutter, always seeing others as being better or more fortunate than us. And this is one way one cannot for sure find happiness. Comparing oneself with others is not the way to go. The grass is not always greener on the other side. We might see it as being so much greener, but we forget that it needed to be mowed. Work needs to be done to keep it green. God needs us to be who we are and to see ourselves as a blessing in who we are and what we do. We need to celebrate ourselves and be grateful for what we have and to see that we are not made to be like others. It is in our differences that fulfill God's purpose and it's in our differences that we are a gift to one another. The mountain in the end was a gift to the stone cutter. And so often we encounter the wisdom that happiness is a state of mind rather than a state of where we are and who we are or what we're doing. This reminds me of the Psalm of David, Psalm 34 verses 8, which says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. This says to me that we are able only to find happiness in the Lord. There will be days that your job will be a breeze and others times challenging. Your family will seem like a blessing one day and the next a curse. But it is where we find our refuge that makes a difference. A man was once sitting in an office. He was waiting for an appointment that he had. Sitting in a waiting room, one often sits and observes and this is what he was doing that day. And noticed how the faces of those working there were filled with concern and seriousness. People were rushing around getting the job done with no smile or, or any sign of joy or happiness. 
Each person was so focused on the task ahead and you could see the anxiousness of stress all over the body language. This probably meant that these people started their workday like this and spent the next eight hours or so in this condition and this would continue for the next five odd days in the same state. For some, even six. What a sad place to be. However, he noticed that there was one worker who was probably the happiest person he had ever seen in a long time. This woman sang as she worked and some um, some people even um, stopped by and greeted her. For some odd reason, people would actually walk past her and were in their serious state and would, would stop and say hi. This greeting was met with a friendly chat of kind words and light jokes. It was evident that she was the heart of the office. She was not just the janitor who made sure that the dustbins were cleaned or the floors were cleaned or... No, she was the one who was the reminder to all, including the man that was observing, that it was not the job we do that makes us happy or the world we live in, but the individual choice. You are the one that brings happiness where you go, where you work, where you shop, where, are, where, where you are the one that brings happiness with you wherever you go. And in that way you make the world a happier place. We were not created to be miserable or complaining or criticizing, but to spread the love and the joy of the Lord regardless of our situations. George Bernard Shaw once wrote, the forces of nature, other than restlessness, selfishness, and a bunch of sicknesses and sorrow, complain that the world will not dedicate itself to make you happy. So happiness can only be found in the Lord. And if we follow this janitor's example of choosing to be happy, we bring that joy of the Lord into the spaces we live, move or visit. As the children of God, it is our duty to be the force of nature in the world that we conduct ourselves in this world that needs cleaning of the miserable way they live and to uplift them up with a smile God has given to us to wear no matter what. We have a choice to rejoice in the Lord always and to be grateful for God's presence in our lives despite what we are going through. If we make that choice, we will see that our mood will change, our vision will change, our perspective will change, and we will find the strength within us to take on the day. Warren Visby said, The key to a happy life is to be joyful to our duties. When the task becomes a pleasure, the burdens become a blessing. Celebrating who you are and where you are in itself is a choice which we are encouraged to make. And before you know it, you will be the heart of the office or the place you stay. You will be the one that people stop by to, to just refill their cup with that which overflows from your heart, which is filled with the joy of the Lord. Let's choose happiness in Christ so that the thirsty world will know whom to turn to for the living water, Jesus Christ. Come, let us pray. Our Lord and Saviour, giver of life and sustainer of the soul, we thank you for the joy and the happiness we can find in you. Nowhere else can we find true happiness but in you. Help us to be the place, the person, that others can stop by and be reminded of the love and the joy you give to us. May our smile uplift others from their places of burden to see your gift of love for them. In celebrating who you have made us and where you have placed us will help us to be the instruments of your love and your compassion. Lord, we choose to find our happiness in you today. Use us for the furtherance of your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May this day be blessed and may this week be an encounter um, of happiness in your life.